Hello everyone and welcome back. It's your friendly neighborhood French Canadian. I hope you're having a great day. And today I want to teach you exactly how stats work in Elden Ring and most soul games. I'll teach you what the letter means, what weapon scaling is exactly, how you can increase your DPS, how you can find the best weapons for your builds, and what stats you need for what damage type. So you'll have everything you need to make the build you want and play how you want. Because I know this stuff can seem complicated when you're a newcomer to the Soul series, but once you understand it, you'll see like the massive variety Elden Ring actually has and how many builds you can create. So if you go on any weapon, you go at the bottom where it says attributes scaling. You see letters there, and again that can seem confusing, but the letters work exactly as you think. E is the worst, S being the best. And so this letter rating basically increases as you level up the weapon with smitting stones. The higher that letter is, when you first pick up the weapon and it's not leveled at all, it means that this weapon has better DPS potential than other weapons with lower stats. So essentially, a weapon that starts with C rating will do more damage than a weapon that starts with D rating as you level it up. So every single weapon in this game will scale with both strength and dexterity. But the type of weapon will determine if it's going to be more effective with the dexterity points or strength points. And you'll see this by looking at the weapon stats and it'll have a better letter writing either on dex or strength. So you see here on my katana, the strength scaling is D and the dex scaling is B. So what that means is you will benefit more from using a dex build with that specific weapon. The katana will do way more damage if you put all your points in dexterity instead of strength. Now there are two types of weapons in this game. There are normal weapons and special weapons. And you can determine which is which. If you can't change the ash of war on a weapon, then it's a special weapon. And you can only upgrade it with somber smithing stones. And it'll go up to plus 10. A normal weapon can go up to plus 25. And you can use normal smithing stones to upgrade it. So the weapons that are better with dex, essentially, uh, those are what we call finesse weapons. And if you look under the cold Nagakiba name, it says katana, and then right under it, it says slash pierce. So the weapons that are better with dex are slashing and piercing weapons. So those are katanas, rapiers, curved swords, twin blades, daggers. And generally speaking, these weapons will always do more damage with a dex build rather than a strength build. Now for a striking weapons, those would be like axes, straight swords, colossal weapons like great swords and hammers. Those will skill better with strength. So essentially, if you would look at a weapon like this, which is a great spear, so it's a colossal weapon, uh, you see in the attribute scaling, the strength is actually A and the dexterity is E. So this weapon would essentially do much, much better if you're using a strength build. Now for the weapons for my caster friends. The mages use a staff, and these will scale with either both strength, dexterity, and intelligence, or just strength or dexterity with intelligence. But there will always be the intelligence stat. Because any sorcery you use that requires the staff will scale with intellect, so they'll do more damage the higher your intellect is. Or intelligence, sorry, I always mix the two up. And for hand casters, aka the incantations you can use in this game, the weapon they use in their hands is called a seal. That's what they use to cast their incantations. Now those weapons almost always scale with fate, except some exceptions like the beast seal, which I think uses strength. Because every single incantation out there needs faith to do damage and you need a certain amount of faith to be able to use it. And just like melee weapons, the staff for sorceries or the seal for incantations, you will need to level it up as if it's a weapon. But I'm going to explain how damage works in this game a bit later on. So as you've probably noticed, most weapons scale with both strength and dexterity. So some people will make what we call a quality build. So they can basically use most strength or dex weapons during the entire game and try out every weapon on their first run. But the problem is, I feel like with this game, it's not really necessary because there is so much diversity with the Ashes of War 
and just the sheer amount of weapons available out there, not to mention how easy it is to respec in this game, I think it's best to just stick to a specific build and respec as you go. So how exactly does the damage even work in this game? So you see in the attack power category here it says physical. That is the weapons based damage which increases as you level it up with smitting stones as I mentioned earlier. Now the number beside it, so the 141 is the physical damage, the number beside it 56 is the modifier based on the attribute scaling. So when it doesn't have an ash of war that would be dexterity or strength. So using what I just explained to you, if a weapon has D in strength and C in dex, then using dex as your primary stat will give you better DPS. Now this Wayhander here is not leveled up, but it will scale better with strength because it's a colossal weapon. So the more you level it up, the more the modifier number, the 56, will go up as well. And those two numbers together make the total amount of damage you do to enemies. Now to increase this further, you can change the affinity on your weapon. Affinities change your weapon scaling and in most cases it adds another stat to scale with. So let's say if I were to put the frost stomp on this wayhander, at the bottom you'll see in intellect it now has a D. And when I use this on the weapon, it will tell me, like the cursor will be right on it, it will tell me that the best affinity for this Ash of War would be cold. And every Ash of War will do this, so let's say you find an Ash of War that does holy damage, then it will direct you to sacred damage type. Similarly, if you find an Ash of War that does fire damage, then it will direct you to fire affinity. Like, you'll see the stat that you need when you choose it. So for this example specifically, frost damage scales with intelligence. So that means if you were to level up this Wayhander, if you want to do the most damage possible, you would need to make a build that the main attributes are strength and intelligence. And that is how you're able to maximize your damage in this game. And that's why people are telling me on my, on my boss guides videos, how do you do so much freaking damage? Well, that's the reason. I pick the best weapon for the class I'm using. I use the best primary stats. I'll be using the stat that scales with the affinity chosen for the specific build. So you don't have to remember what type of damage scales with which stat. As I mentioned, as soon as you have the Ash of War that has a specific damage type, you'll see which affinity is best for that damage type and you'll see which stat you need in the attribute scaling section. But you see how it splits the two damages. If you go in attack power, you look at physical and then you look at magic. If you apply cold, the damage will split and now the physical damage will decrease, but the magic damage and the modifier itself will increase. So you'll end up doing more damage. Like it looks like you're gonna do less damage, but essentially you'll be doing way more. And this, all these numbers will actually increase as you level up intelligence for magic and strength for physical damage. So the last thing I want to talk about is the effect buildup. So a lot of the damages in this game have an effect buildup. Once the enemy's effect bar is completely filled up, it will cause a status effect. So let's say with cold. As you hit enemies, it will cause frost buildup. Once that frost bar is completely filled up, it will cause frostbite on the enemy, which will essentially take a massive chunk of their health away. It's like if all that ice builds up on them and then just explodes in shards, really sharp shards of ice. That's how you have to see it. So it will cause damage because of that. Just the same that it works with blood loss. If you're using a weapon that causes blood loss, as soon as that bar is filled up, the enemy will lose a massive chunk of their health. And similarly, if you're using like poison or a scarlet rot, then the enemy will start slowly losing health because once that bar is filled up, they'll be poison or they'll have a scarlet rot. Essentially, it works the same way as it works on you when enemies hit you with that stuff. So I hope this wasn't too confusing, that you understood what I was talking about and if I missed anything feel free to put your own tips in the comments. I'm sure all the newcomers to the soul games will find them really helpful. Like I know we have this reputation of gatekeeping these games but it's really not true. You know the souls community is probably one of the most helpful and nice gaming communities out there. And that's what I want to do with this channel really. 
and I've seen a lot of helpful tip in a comment, you know, some stuff that has helped me even. And basically, I want just newcomers to go in the comment section and be able to find even more help than the video itself. That's really my goal with these videos. So keep it up, guys. Have yourself a wonderful day, and I'll see you all very soon.